In today's show, we're going to how you password protect a Power App screen. You want to have a button where only you can get access to it by knowing the secret code? Then this is the video for you. We're also going to talk about this thing over here. New announcement. Ooh. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And still those guys. But don't worry, we'll explain the whole company differences at the end of the video. First, let's get into what you want to learn about, and that is password protecting Power App screens. Uh, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to set up that password box. We're going to use some pop-ups to do that. And even more fun is if they put in the wrong password, we're going to send them off to a, a waiting room for a little bit and punish them for typing in the wrong password. That way no one tries to power their way through it, right? We've got to have security conscious even in our Power Apps. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's just switch over to my desktop and get started. Okay, so we'll just open my browser. And so here you're gonna see our app. And so what I did in this video was I went ahead and built the whole app first um, because there's a lot of little moving pieces and I just thought it would end up making an hour long video and I didn't want you to have to sit through an hour of me uh, putting controls on the page and stuff. But don't worry, we're gonna go through every ounce of functionality and make sure that we explain in great detail how they all works. We're just not gonna spend time adding buttons, adding galleries and all that. So before we do any of that though, let's demo the app. So let's hit the preview button. And you also notice that I, as a special occasion, made this app just about as pretty as I can make an app. I've made some slightly prettier, but this was really stretching it for me. You guys have seen enough videos, you know I make ugly apps. What do you do? You guys need to keep making pretty apps, so. Okay, so this simple app, if you click add customer data, it's just a normal screen everyone can get to. Yay, adding customer data, home. We say view customer data. This is just a gallery screen, same type of thing, where you can browse through, jump into people's records. Yay, you can see my pretty face. You can see uh, for my wife, I did a little Rudolph thing. My dog, that's a picture of him. Apparently I went with a the Christmas theme. I didn't even mean to do a Christmas theme. That's what I did. This is a uh, image, whatever, lots of fun. Okay, anyway, back to home. What you're really interested in though is down here at the bottom, I have an administrators only button. And so even though you know with Power Apps it's important to know like if my data source was Excel, Everyone has access to that Excel file, so they could get in here, they could go to the back end if they really wanted. But sometimes you just want a screen that, you know, maybe you're protecting it um, because it's the, you know, uh, finish this and send an email of the results or something. You know, I think that was the last request I got. And there's different ways you could do this. We could have this button only be visible if user's email was your email, you know, a lot of different ways. But for whatever reason, people want this password screen, so we're going to make a password screen. So click on administrators only. And you're going to see I give a little pop-up, right? And if you look down below, there's a link to a conditional formatting video. That's where I taught how pop-ups work. We'll talk about how they work here as well, but that's the boring, long, detailed version of how uh, pop-ups work. But so here you can see, you know, you can only proceed if you know the password. Do you? So there's a whoops button. If you click whoops, it just takes you back. You know, you don't want to get yelled at by me by trying to hack into my screen. Click on whoops. Do administrators only though. If you put in the right password, one, two, three, four, Oh, I just told you the password. Shh. Notice though, I did the uh, password mask here so you can't even see what I typed in. We'll say, let me in. And there you go. Now you're on the secret screen. If we go back to home and we say administrators only, everything's back to the start. If I type in the wrong password, let me in. Oh, I thought you knew the password. So we're gonna talk about how this works because this is different, updating the text based on the condition. So let me in again, let me in again. After three attempts, we send you off to jail for 10 seconds. In this screen, there's no way for you to get off the screen other than to wait 10 seconds, right? In Power Apps, that's, there's no back button unless I give you a back button. There's no navigate the home button unless I give it to you. So that's a good mental note because it's important to remember that with um, Power Apps, we don't have to um, worry about people seeing screens that we don't give them a way to navigate to, and we don't have to worry about them leaving a screen that we don't give them a way to navigate off of, all right? So let's go look at how all this works, right? Google Chrome even wants to remember my password. No, thank you. Okay, so add customer data. This is just a normal button that navigates to a normal screen, right? View customer, navigates to a normal screen. Boring, not gonna talk about that. Administrators only, this is where the magic starts to happen. But this is just a little bit of the magic. Um, and I found out a lot of people don't know you can pull this down and make it easier to read. And so if you're ever also wondering, how do I format this? Because I didn't know until the other day. If you hold down the shift key and hit enter, that's how you add lines to um, make it a little easier to read. Okay, I'll get rid of that line right now. We'll just leave that line because now I'm gonna mess it up. But so here you can see, when people click my administrators only button, uh, we're gonna update context, right? We're gonna create some context variables and change their values. 
So I'm gonna create one name pop up and its value is gonna be true or false, so it's gonna be a Boolean variable. Message text, you can only proceed if you know the password. So one of the things that comes up a lot with people is like, hey, I wanna have, when I press a button, I wanna change a control, I wanna change the text that a label's displaying, that type of stuff. There's no way to do that in Power Apps directly. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna create a context variable called message text, we're gonna put our text in there, and then on my label, I'm gonna display the contents of that variable. So then if I change the variable, what's shown on, in that label will change. So that's one of the things with Power Apps, right? We kinda of have to think about how do I work at this from the different angles that Power Apps gives us. And this is a, a great example of where I would use something like that. We're also gonna create a variable called bad password count, and we're gonna set it to zero. So that, that way every time you go into the admin screen, we're gonna give you three tries to uh, hack it through. And if not, we're gonna do the mean things to you. But bad password counts, we set that to zero. Um, and so then we're also going to reset the password field and just make sure we blanked out the password field in case you were in there before and there was still some cruft left, right? Notice there's no navigate or anything because update context is going to um, set this pop-up value to true. And if we look right here, I took all those controls and I set the visible property not for the individual controls, but for the actual pop-up group itself, I set that to the value of pop-up. And so pop-up is either true or false, invisible either takes true or false. So not a lot of extra coding there, just put the variable's name in there because you made it true or false. That's why you wouldn't want to say yes or no, because you could, couldn't use yes or no here. It'd have to then have an if. If yes, then true. If no, then false. So you don't want to do that. You just want to make those variables true or false, okay? so. Let's hit the preview screen because now I need to click the button to make the pop-up happen. All right, I'll close back out. So then now what we're seeing is the contents of my pop-up. And so if we start at the bottom, it's the easiest way to go. I have an overlay image. So I created a uh, big gray rectangle and then I set its transparency to like 75%, right? We can just see that I did, uh, for there we did fill, right? So this is the color for gray and then the 75%, so that's what makes that grayness pop up, so they know they're kind of still on the same screen. The message box, um, so this is just a normal label control, and I set the fill to green, I set the font color, or not to green, to purple, I can't, uh, what do you do? Um, I set the font to white, and then for the text, instead of having something hard-coded in here like we normally do, I'm just using that message text contextual variable that we just talked about, and so right now, stored in there is, you can only proceed if you know the password. Easy enough. For the password field, this is just a normal text input. And so in my text input, the only thing special about it was I went ahead and set the uh, mode. And so the mode here is textmode.password. Now by default, when you add it, it would have been textmode.single line, that bottom option. And that's the default for a uh, input field. You could do multi-line if you want to let them type a bunch of notes, you want to kind of have scroll bars and let them you know, have some nice formatted looking text. Or you can do password, and that's what turns all those characters into dots so you couldn't see my secret password that I already told you because I'm a dummy. All right, so that was all we had to do for that. The button whoops, um, in the whoops button, all we do is update our context variable back to false so that that would just make all this stuff disappear, right? So there's no navigate, there's no change anything, just if they click whoops, change that variable, all this stuff that is in this pop-up group goes away. And then finally, um, we get in here, and so this button, the let me in button, this is where all the magic really happens, right? And also remember, if you're sitting there thinking right now, whoa, Shane just went way too fast on all that pop-up stuff, that's because there's a separate video below that covers pop-ups and gory detail. So I'm assuming most of you have seen that in some capacity, so I didn't want to go through all of that again. That's, but if you're blown away by even the whole pop-up mentality, stop this video, go watch that one, and then come back. All right, you're back, good. So here we go, and um, so I pulled this down so we could read this. And right, remember we use our control enters to kind of space this out. You know, if you've done any type of development for, then tabbing and all that, you've probably got a specific way you want to do this. I just tried to make this as consumable as possible. So let's look at how the let me in button works. So if password field text equals one, two, three, four, that, there's my password, one, two, three, four. That's all it takes, right? It's a simple, compare what they typed in that text box to these numbers or letters or, you know, secret algorithm that you got, whatever you want them to have to type in, you just put it where I've got one, two, three, four, and then what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say, if they typed in the right numbers, 
or letters or characters, whatever it is, we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna say reset the password field. So reset, you know, blank out the password field. That makes sense. We're gonna update our context and we're gonna set um, pop-up back to false. So the next time they come to the home screen, they don't see our pop-up screen. Makes a lot of sense, right? And the semicolons is how we're stringing a bunch of stuff together, right? And then finally, we're gonna navigate them off to the admins only screen. And we'll look at that in a second. But the admins only screen, we're just gonna use the cover function. So that's what we're gonna do if they type in the right password. And then this comma says, all right, so that was the, the true, right? This was the thing we compared. This, these three lines were the true. And this comma says, here's what we're gonna do if it's false. So then this is where we gotta think a little harder. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna update the context again, but we're gonna change the message text to, I thought you knew the password, try again. That's how we're gonna change what the label shows us. We're gonna set our bad password count we're gonna use the sum function. And so the sum function, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, we wanna take whatever value is stored in bad password count. And so uh, we know that when we pressed the button admin only, we set that to zero. So the first time they type it in, it'll be zero. And then comma, which means plus. So zero plus one is one. So now a bad, word, bad, bad password count is one the first time through. So we're gonna do all that. We're then, right, so here's our semicolon, so another line, we're gonna do a reset the password field. We wanna blank it out again, so that way they don't type in the wrong password over and over again. Okay, that one's done. And then, when all of that is done, right, so that finishes this whole if. So this is a little confusing, like when I was looking at it, I had to remember what I did here, but this uh, parentheses, it's why I space it this way, is this if is done, okay? That if is done, so semicolon, so let's do something else. And we're gonna do a second if after that if is done. And we're gonna say if bad password count equals three, right? So if incrementing this, we did one, we did two, we did three. Then we're going to say update context pop-up equals false, right? So make sure we shut down the, uh, the pop-up menu so when I get back to the home, they don't have the pop-up anymore. And then we're gonna navigate them to the screen that I so aptly named jail. And we're gonna use the fade transition to get them there. Uh, so jail is funny to me, right? Because with my uh, first like dog I had, you know, when I was in college, um, he had a cage, right? Because you're supposed to crate train dogs. And so for whatever reason, because we were dumb college kids, we named his uh, crate jail, right? The dog doesn't know. I don't know what jail is. So we just be like, go to jail. And he would go to his, his cage like he was supposed to. So the new dog, Chewy, the one that had the big elf ears, um, he's a good dog. He does not have to be crate trained. But the first dog, for the first two or three years, he's a little rambunctious in our apartment. You know, and, I mean, college apartment, there's a lot of valuable stuff in there. No, there wasn't. Uh, but we didn't want him, you know, messing up the place when we were gone, so he had to be crate trained. Anyway, you don't care. My dog's cage was named Jail, so that's what I named this screen that we send people off to. Okay? So that's it. That is all of the functionality that it takes to make this let me in button function, right? We've got the, what do we do if they put in the right stuff? What do we do if they put in the wrong stuff? If they put in the wrong stuff too many times, then let's send them off to Jail. So let's go look at Jail. So we'll make this smaller again because it does get in the way. So on the jail screen, we got two things. We have a label. So this is just where I have the text. The first time I did the video, the text was a little mean. I decided to make it a little less mean. Um, so for the video, there you go, I'm a nice guy. And then also hidden on the screen right now, I have a timer control. And we'll change that um, back to true. And the reason I had it hidden was because I didn't want the people to be able to see it or click on it. And you know, they don't need to know. They're gonna sit here for 10 seconds. They don't need to see me counting down. But what happens is with this timer, there's a couple of things. So visible, true or false. So we'll make it back to true. Duration, so this is how long you need them to sit here. Remember, this is in milliseconds. So this is 10 milliseconds. So if you made it 60,000, that would be one minute. You know, made it 600,000, that'd be 10 minutes. However long you want them to be sitting here because they can't leave the screen without, you know, completely closing the app. Right? There's no way for them to navigate anywhere because there's no buttons on the screen to navigate them away. So then what we did, we also made sure that the um, timer automatically started when you land on the page. That way, it's only 10 seconds. And then finally, um, on timer end, we then navigate them back to the home screen. So uh, there's a separate video below on the timer control as well. You know, Maybe you want to have a button here that says, are you sorry? And only after they click the are you sorry button does the 10 second timer start. Or you know, maybe you wanna do more complex things around counting how many times they've put in the wrong passwords. Or maybe you wanna make it bigger. You know, all of that's open to you because now you've got all the different controls that work for that. 
But that's, uh, I think that about sums up our app, right? So we'll sit here for our 10 seconds and I'll ramble while we do. But hopefully this gives you guys an idea. This password lock screen um, has been a real popular topic a lot of people have asked for. What I'd love to know is understand what you're using it for. Leave me comments below and tell me why you wanted a password lock screen, what you're using for it. I just like to understand business use cases, okay? So I think that ties us up on that. Um, also, I'll offer real quick, you know, you don't have to listen to this part, but so if you're wondering about whole Power Apps 911, so that's a spinoff of our friend Bold Zebras. We've been getting so much demand from people with Power Apps where they want us to help them, right? Whether it's 30 minutes of help or, you know, five or seven or 10 hours of help to build their whole app. Uh, so we actually spun off a separate company and that's the beauty of it. If you just need me to get on with you for 15 minutes and do a screen share to fix that one drop down button like I did for the uh, automotive guy out in California, that's what Power Apps 911 can do. You don't have to do a big full consulting engagement. Hop on, pay with a credit card, me and you will fix your app, no problem. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. I, I like launching new business ideas and it's just a spin off of Bold Zebra, so it should be fun. And I think that sums it up for the day. So. Uh, let me know what you think of the video and so thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is. Check out the Power Apps playlist over here and, you know, enjoy that. All right. Thanks and have a great day.